Hello. I'm bisexual. Hi, bisexual. I'm Dad. I mean, Holly. <laughs> I'm Holly. And welcome back to Holly Likes Gays. I mean, games. <laughs> You may have arrived here because you're a big fan of Clock on the Blood Tower, or you may be here because you want to see the very best that no one ever was. Done, done, done. Personally, I've pulled myself out of May and all the way into the glittering rainbow goddess that is June to bring you my five LGBTQ plus video game wrecks to play this pride. Straights watching this video, I see you quiver and quake. What if these games aren't for me. Well, if you're still wondering, I would highly recommend these games. They are all great. Besides, I've played a lot of stray games in my life and I haven't burst into flames yet or become straight. One of the ways in which gaming differentiates itself from other forms of entertainment is by being playable. You are invited to pick up the story yourself and make your own way through whatever awaits you. Over the years, games have developed many customizable features to integrate their audiences, from name and hair color to where you want to assign your skill points. Pronouns and sexual preference are the natural extension of this. And sure, there are games where you play as a set character and take on their life, but even then, the inclusion of LGBTQ characters gives us fresh, new narratives to play and gives me a warm fuzzy feeling of recognition. Video games are a safe place to try new things, free of judgment and consequences. And while there's no wrong way to play a game, you might even discover a little bit about yourself in the meantime. <coughs> 10 year old Holly, <coughs> Nami and Harvest Moon DS. In so many video games, including in games I really, really love, there are thousands of characters vocally heterosexual and not a single character openly from the LGBTQ community. Boo. No more, I say. I've not put The Last of Us or Assassin's Creed The Odyssey on this list. I'll be playing them this Pride, but as I've not played them yet, I can't include them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? So while I'm bettering myself with those two masterpieces, here are my five recommendations of video games for you to play this Pride. Sapphic, sensual, and the spirit of soft summer nights at their absolute best. A Summer's End Hong Kong 1986 is one of the finest interactive novels you can find. You play as Michelle, cautious and withdrawn, working each day in an office focused entirely on impressing your superiors and achieving your targets. But then you meet Sam. This gorgeous story from Oracle and Bone features some of the most stunning artwork I've seen in a long time, reminiscent of the height of cinema in Hong Kong. The soundtrack is hypnotizing. There's this electric repetition that feels as soporific as the heat at the end of a hot summer's day. And the game is hot. But the characters aren't fetishized in the slightest. You can tell it's been made by a sympathetic and invested team and the representation is rooted in realism. The vibe is deliciously languid, but if you're looking for a fast paced, heavily involved thriller, this one isn't for you. I've spoken a lot about games for players who are in need of distraction from physical, mental and chronic illnesses and I can't help but feel that this would be a perfect choice for someone in search of a game that requires only a little of their energy. You make a few choices and let the narrative wash over you, moving forward at entirely your own pace. I can only speak for the ending which I was led to and I haven't played with the adult patch but I will say if you're suffering from any coming out trauma or painful family related stress, I would give this one a miss, at least for now. There is also a plethora of references to toxic diet culture. It is criticized and included to present a developing and beautiful relationship with food and love. But as a result, it is not a game for everyone. These moments aside, it comes with a very important lesson for the LGBTQ community. Always choose the ones that take you stargazing! And speaking of stargazers... Oh, Maru. 
Maru? Why do people always choose Abigail? And why do you always choose Harvey? Harvey! Stardew Valley is a big hitter among queer players for a very good reason. It might look like a farming simulator with a dating mechanic, but oh, it's so much more. You want resources to hoard? You got it. You want combat? Here's thousands of slimes ready for you to slay. You want magic? Meet the Ghibli Spoofs. Oh my, you're in for a treat with the Ghibli Spoofs. You want to single-handedly destroy capitalism? Burn Jojo Mart to the ground. And if you want to be a massive flirt, be a massive flirt with whoever you want. Whoever you want. Your decisions are as fluid as you are, and how you choose to navigate heart events comes down to the interactions you want to make. There's something about finding yourself alone at the flower dance, watching Maru dance with Harvey instead of you, that brings home the gravity of what Concerned Ape achieved with Stardew Valley. If this isn't queer representation, then I don't know what is. However, Stardew Valley is at number four for a good reason. I have sunk thousands of hours across so many platforms into it, but there's one mistake I can't overlook, which we see done perfectly in In the opening of Stardew Valley, you have to select male or female, excluding vast numbers of queer players from being represented in this game. The only time it comes up is at the starting selection screen, and I don't know why we couldn't simply have the what do you look like option, which Pokemon have used in replacement of their previous are you a boy or a girl. This and gender neutral pronouns throughout is what I'm really hoping to see in Concerned Ape's next game, Haunted Chocolatier. Am I excited or am I excited? And this is what we get in Animal Crossing. Unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know of Animal Crossing New Horizons as the game which kept so many people occupied during the pandemic. Replacing the real-life terror Jeff Bezos with the only marginally less horrifying Tom Nook and his two sons Tommy and Timmy. Timmy. Let Tommy speak. But what's queer about Animal Crossing? Well, Firstly, this game is made inherently universal with gender neutral pronouns for the protagonist. Then there's the fundamental principles of this game. You craft your chosen family and make your own version of paradise for them to live in. Which could mean making your own underground gay bar, well done Lucy, you sapphic goddess. Or in my case, creating the witchy den of your dreams like the spellcasting, horoscope loving, stereotypical bitch you are, fight me. Celeste is a platformer. You can run, climb, jump, air dash, and that's literally it. So why is it so f***ing hard? I have played a number of serious games in my life, but I have never played a game as difficult as this one. I mean, look at this level. This level. Holy f***. I can't believe I ever made it through that level. F***ing f***ing sh You play Madeline in her painstaking climb up Mount Celeste. It is hard, it feels eternal, and you will die thousands and thousands of times. But if you've ever been on any kind of gender or sexual identity journey, this will make you cry. This plaque will break you. Yes, the pixel art is just too damn adorable, and the soundtrack is bop after bop, but what Maddie Thorson and her team at Extremely OK Games has done is so much more than the best platformer you'll ever play. Celeste is poignant, challenging, and unique. And you'll be supporting an LGBTQ plus led indie company, which is always nice. Oh yes, I love an indie game. And there is none so great as Undertale, the jewel in the indie gaming crown. This game is about as indie as it gets, but that's not why this game is at number one. You play a child with they them pronouns, making their way through a dangerous underground world. You will meet openly queer, nuanced characters in the middle of a vibrant and quirky land. But that's not it either. The art style is to die for. The music is so goddamn charming. The script makes me howl with laughter. But wait, there's more. What Toby Fox did with Temi Chang in making this game 
was to fundamentally change the world of gaming, shake the snow globe of it, replace all the doorknobs in the house with snow globes, and then use the doors to toboggan off the end of the world into the great unknown. Undertale offers an easy route, an expected route, but it greatly rewards intelligent, patient, outside the box gameplay, and honestly, I haven't been able to play a single game in the same way since. So if you're looking for something all-inclusive, quietly transgressive, and possibly the most endearing game to ever warm an icy heart like mine, play Undertale this June. I'll be playing at this Pride over on my Twitch channel, and I can't wait to fully introduce this glorious game to you all. And those were my five video games to play this Pride. Thanks so much for watching. Did I miss one of your favourites? Let me know in the comments below, I'm always looking for new games to try. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And let me know if you pick up any of these games. I am genuinely excited to see how you get on. For now, stay safe and have a happy Pride.